This is the 2013 Level 2 Mechanics paper. Question 1 on motion. Jason spends a day at an amusement park. He stands on a merry-go-round which turns at a constant speed. The diagram below shows Jason standing on the merry-go-round which is going around in a clockwise direction. There's an arrow which shows that, which is nice. Uh, a says, on the diagram above, draw an arrow on Jason to show the direction of his velocity at that point. It's going to be at a tangent to the radial direction from there. So it's going to be right, right angles, sorry, tangent. Yes, it's going to be at right angles to that radial uh, position. B, the radius of the merry-go-round is 4 metres, 4.0 metres. Uh, the merry-go-round takes 15 seconds to do a complete circle and Jason has a mass of 65 kilograms. Calculate the centripetal force needed to keep him moving in a circle. So this is a nice question to lead you into it. Centripetal force, there's the equation, mb squared over r. Um, we've got the mass, we've got the radius, we just need the velocity. Um, now, <coughs> excuse me, now the uh, velocity is going to be the distance covered over time. Um, let's just write that over here, V equals D over T. Um, we know that the time it takes to do a complete circle is 15 seconds, so we've got the time. Uh, we just need to know the distance. Um, for the circumference, C, uh, remember the 3 or uh, 3.14 pi times by the uh, diameter will give you the circumference, or 2 pi r if you like. So we'd have it 2 pi r over t, and we've got 2, we've got pi, we've got r, the radius being 4.0 metres in t. Uh, so we've got enough information to calculate the velocity, and then we can plug that into uh, that formula there to give us a centripetal force and whatever get is whatever you get, but the units should be newtons and it's looking like it should be to 2SF as well, two significant figures because you've got two significant figures for everything else that's going into the equation C. Jason then goes for a ride on a go-kart, so I think we're um, scrapping all the circular motion stuff, focus on the go-kart. Towards the end of the ride, he decelerates at 2.5 metres per second per second, so that's quite an important figure. Let's just circle that. Um, and he comes to a stop in 4.2 seconds, so that's our time, uh, that's our acceleration, except we would give it as negative 2.5 uh, metres per second squared. Um, by calculating Jason's initial velocity, determine the distance he travels before coming to a stop. So we have to calculate his initial velocity first, vi, expression mark, his final velocity therefore if he's coming to a stop is zero. Um, we've got his acceleration. Which if we take the initial velocity as positive, that means his acceleration will be negative, 2.5 metres per second squared. We've got the time uh, of 4.2 seconds, so we could then use Vf equals Vi plus At. That's going to give us um, the uh, initial velocity. So once we've found that initial velocity, we just rearrange that formula, plug in the numbers we've got. We then have to find the distance he travels while coming to a stop, and then we can use our other formula, D equals VIT plus half AT squared. Now there's other ways of doing this, but they're deliberately asking you to calculate the initial velocity first, so then you'll go to a nice easy equation, and it'll be easier for the marker, if I'm really honest as well. Uh, D. We've got Jason sitting on a slide, as shown on the diagram on the right. He's sliding down at a constant speed. As soon as you see constant speed before you even look at the question, you should be thinking that the net force is zero. Constant speed means there's no acceleration. No acceleration means there's no unbalanced force. And part one straight away says state the size of the net force. It's going to be zero newtons. State is also a clue. It's not a calculation, so you need to understand the concepts of what's going on there. Two, on the diagram on the right, draw the remaining forces as labelled vectors acting on Jason. Fg has been drawn for you. So there's going to be two remaining forces. There is a, a reaction force, um, or a normal force, on the surface of the slide. And then there is a friction force. Um, and the friction force should be quite small uh, in comparison to the normal force and the force due to gravity. Part three, complete and label the vector addition diagram. Oh, did I have to write, label them? I did. Let's label them. Fn is normal force and if, if as the friction force. You should probably write them out in full at some point so that they know uh, what, you, uh, what your notations are. So F subscript N would be your normal force. Uh, anyway, carrying on. 
uh, complete and label the vector diagram of the forces acting on Jason. This is force due to gravity. A normal force acts up and in that direction. I've definitely not drawn this to scale. And then your um, friction force is up in there. Now the cool thing with vectors is you can shift them around. Um, they don't really, uh, it doesn't matter where they are located in space, um, but they still have to maintain the same angle compared to a fixed referent, which might be a horizontal or a vertical position. Um, so the, the angles don't change from the vertical. Um, we'll call that theta and phi. So you can just shuffle those um, equations around. Let me just see if, I can see if I can do something a little bit clever here. Um, we can, nope, that won't work. Let's try a different colour. Green, if this was a vector, a vector, and then I pick this one and move it around, it doesn't matter that this vector is changing positions, it is still the same vector. So we can actually uh, do, do a little bit of creativity here and show the addition of these vectors. Here's another one, and we'll just shift that one around over there, see how we're adding them top to tail, and then if we have the blue one, which is the force due to gravity. Um, and lovely. Um, very good thing to note is uh, that when you add all these vectors together, they come back to the start. So if I was to be um, adding um, vectors this way first, and then to that one, and then to that one, it goes back to my original start point, which means um, there is a zero net force, because if you add all these up, the length of the vector is zero. Uh, 